Welcome back to another episode of Eric's Camping Adventures. We're going to go on another search today looking for some beautiful places. We are headed northeast from Tulsa towards Joplin, Missouri. We're going to head north from there to some wide open prairie. The rolling hills of northeast Oklahoma give way to the cute mid-sized town of Joplin, Missouri, but from there, it is flat land going north. There are some beautiful farms with white rail fences, irrigation equipment, windmills, and grain bins just line the road. If you like out in the middle of nowhere like I do, you'd like Prairie State Park. It is not a developed area. It is dirt road, gravel road, and lots of dust to get there. That brown haze you see in the distance that is a controlled burn that's going on. A friend of mine warned me that uh, this might be happening in the park and it was active while we drove right past it. The building on the right is the park office and we'll come back there in the morning and check in. said we as I'm discussing going to this park and it is not Michelle and I today it is Natalie and Warren from the adventure to Padre Island that have joined me on this little excursion to uh, the prairie Natalie and Warren are in their lime green forerunner with Duncan and Remy their two dogs Natalie and Warren have done some very nice modifications to their forerunner with the rooftop tent, with the tire swing, the inside with the fridge and the deck and all the mounting. I guess it's all the things that I'd like to have, but uh, I am just a frugal guy and I just keep sticking with some of the cheaper options. And I wonder sometimes if with all the volume of cheaper options that I have put on my little trailer and my Jeep if I'm really saving money, but the idea is to not impact my budget, to have a small financial footprint with this, to be able to get out and to uh, and see, see exciting things. My mom had macular degeneration, so I want to see the world while I'm still working. If I wait till retirement, I might not be able to see it. Cascadia vehicle tent that I use has lasted me since 2014 and I'm somewhat amazed by it. I had just actually gone through with simple vinegar and cleaned the canvas and it really still looks brand new. On a warm day this winter I did treat the rain fly with some waterproofing. I, I don't know if I needed to but I thought it was just about time after 10 years. I did set up my Wenzel canopy because we were going to have some cold nights and you would be surprised how much that heat from the propane fire pit is just reflected right back down on you with that canopy. It's kind of amazing. We got set up kind of late. We didn't waste any time with dinner. I just had a backpacking meal and then 
we all just kind of crashed by eight o'clock. We all just hit the sack. It is time to get up this morning. Make some coffee, light, light that propane fire pit and freeze outside just a little bit. This uh, electric blanket is just pretty cozy, but uh, sometimes it'll get you warm enough to just drive you out of the sleeping bag. And I, I've done that this morning, so time to get up. I got tired of lugging water around. <laughs> USB chargeable pump right on the front of a jerry can for water. Water's kind of heavy and you only get one spine. I always like to take in my first cup of coffee with just a little bit of wandering around my campsite and maybe even looking around with my drone.
I bought that little burner just so I could burn off some old backpacking things of uh, isobutane and it actually has a little connector to connect to my propane line too so that's good Duncan, Natalie, Remy and Warren were slowly stirring next door so I wandered on over to see how they were doing Wow, Remy, you're getting a good breakfast there. Good morning, girl. You're just a little excited about that. Old dog food, some rice and peas. What about you, Duncan? Oh yeah, you got the same. You got green beans. It ain't fair. Yeah, green beans, and I think I see a carrot chunk in there. You might have just devoured. Oh yeah. Better not let Max see that. Oh yeah, a little bowling water. Ooh. That just looks way better than mine. <laughs> How did you make yours? A Walmart French press. No, hey, that'll get the job French done. French presses are one of the best ways to drink coffee. At least you didn't say I used a full stool school percolator and I'm Sifting coffee grinds out of my teeth. That's right how now. my dad drinks it. Cowboy yeah. coffee. <laughs> oh, and this one's a plastic bottom. And this one, is that, right? And then the one on the bottom, the one I used last night. Yeah. The pot. Oh, I thought the gray bottom was maybe your steel that you. Know, that would be nice. Them. After some good coffee and some breakfast, we started making our plans for the day. Dogs with the dogs. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, this is why we are. Yeah, the train goes, it goes right, right through, through the middle. Okay. Yeah, so these two are the ones that you can take dogs on. So we're up here, and here's this must be where we turned right. The turned down right. Down, yeah. Well, here's the cent visitor so center. We, I mean, both of those that would be Duncan. a nice hike. Yeah. yeah. To do both those guys. Because we can't all fit in the jeep. Yeah. Is what I'm yeah, we can. So we got I, got it, I got it emptied out. We can. Everybody could load in there. <laughs> Okay. Costa Rica style. Yeah. The Gaia app shows all the trails in the park, the path of the sky people, and the path of the earth people allow dogs. Yeah. So that's where we're going today. First trail we went to was the Path of the Sky People, and it is part of the Z Show Prairie. laughing so hard when you said
another water crossing. Yeah. on Path of the Sky People, we headed over to Path of the Earth People and took in the Hunka Prairie. This area had been through a controlled burn, so it wasn't as prairie-like, but there were some other interesting things here. With all the prairie grass gone, we saw some bleached out bones from an old kill, probably a coyote that had killed a deer. A rather fresh kill. Your wolf instincts are coming out, Duncan. I see your facial expressions. Natalie spotted some teeth, and here we go. It's supposed to be the year of the cicada, so here's the cicada cocoon. After another two miles, in the hunk of prairie, we went back to our campsites and we just relaxed, took in uh, the fresh air, we got into our hammocks, took a nap, and just relaxed.
it is getting to be evening and it's time to head back to the campsite and get some dinner ready. I actually am going to cook tonight. If you unsubscribe during the earlier backpacking meal, you can resubscribe. Michelle has organized me well for this meal and it's going to be a good one. There's some little grooves on this uh, little pump and I need to uh, get them uh, kind of filed off so it'll fit into the jerry can spout a little bit better and it'll be good to go. The first time I met Natalie and Warren we were at a overlanding rally and I was cooking some deer meat and Natalie came over because she smelled this absolutely delicious smell and I was actually on the phone with Michelle and Michelle was basically telling me how to prepare the meat and Natalie looked at me and I looked at her and said, my wife is telling me how not to poison myself, but I have advanced since that time. I think I'm gonna have one burger and one steak. I'm gonna do my burger first, make sure it's good and done, and then we'll get the steak on there. Four tiny little steaks. We got cleaned up after dinner, but we did miss the sunset. But the sky was still beautiful. It was filled with a beautiful orange hue. Most of that in this area is from wind and dust. It just creates a haze that by the time the sun reflects into the dust particles in the evening, it just creates that beautiful haze. We enjoyed another evening of laughter and conversation around the fire. And I, I got a text from the gentleman who warned me of the controlled burns and had come and checked out the park in advance of me coming and invited me for breakfast in the morning. Well, it is time to hit the hay. So I might do a little bit of reading and then I'm gonna head off to bed and uh, I'll uh, catch you in the morning. Good morning. I'm going to start packing up the inside of my tent here in the dark, get everything down towards the ladder end, and get ready to roll today.
That boiling water is for a shower. I'm gonna clean up before breakfast. have to give Prairie State Park a thumbs up. I think it's a return to place because for what I like, it was quiet, um, it was remote, a little harder for um, someone to access, and that's probably what made it a little bit quieter. It was off season, so that helps too. You know, one of the ways that I find some of these quiet places is I really do seek them during the off season. Not many people go to them. It's usually a little bit more quiet, and that is what makes it into a, a quiet, peaceful experience in some of these parks. So I have to say thank you to Mark and Karen for coming by and checking out the park in advance. And the little spoof at the end of the video is just for you about the water crossing coming into the campground. Come back next time. We're gonna get Max, our new puppy dog, out for his very first camping trip. I don't know if we can do this. Mm. I feel, I Eric, feel anxiety. Eric, put it in low, put it in low, Eric. I don't Eric. know, Warren, you, you think we can do this one? I don't know, it seems a little deep. All right, well, it's just an old Jeep anyway, so. Uh... always do water crossings but when I do I make sure I have my expedition hat and my safari snorkel.